What's up guys and welcome to the channel. So there are things that you can optimize in your gaming gear setup that help you squeeze the every last bit of performance out for yourself. But at the end of the day, great gear won't make a bad player great. And of course the same is true the other way around. It's all about your own personal skill. But the five things or tips that we are gonna cover here will help you find the most optimal mousepad for you. And the first one is to consider what kind of games do you play before you buy your mousepad. Are those games tracking heavy or are they more based on flick shots? Precision is also one thing that really matters. For example in CSGO, the enemies can be sometimes very far away and you really need to hit those headshots. So the target is going to be very small. In these cases, you do of course benefit from additional stopping power. CS and Valorant are very challenging games in the sense that it's very punishing for you when you miss your shots. The time to kill is so quick that when you mess up, you're most likely dead. In a more tracking heavy game like Apex, you do not want that much friction because that will make your tracking harder. So if I take two examples, for example, the X-ray pad Equate can be a great mousepad for CSGO and then again the NPC 450 can be a great mousepad for Apex. Those are pretty much complete opposites. The next thing is to consider how much pressure actually affects you. So do you have this shaky hand syndrome once it gets tough in game? So if this is the way that you respond to these tough, tense or high stake situations, you should definitely consider a control pad. The additional friction will help you in these situations when you start to panic or you get these shaky hands. Remember that there are many high tier and even professional players who have shaky hands and those guys can handle it very well. An additional tip for you guys, on top of a control pad, also use a low sensitivity. But control surfaces can also be more reliable when you're not 100%. So for example, if you have bad sleep schedule, your diet is bad, or you're just old. Once you get older, you will notice these external things affecting your in-game performance much more. For you young bucks out there, these also affect you, but not that much. The third thing is to get a mousepad that's compatible with your mouse and mouse feet. Are you testing new peripherals all the time, or are you consistent with a single mouse? Some mice and some mouse feet are not that great with all surfaces, but you can fix this with aftermarket feet. I'm very much against you buying new mice all the time, but if you still want to do that, you need a consistent mousepad. And especially a mousepad that's good with different kind of mouse feet. Something like the Endgame Gear MPC 450 works very very well with all kinds of mouse feet. Also the Extra 5 GP4 with artwork and the Hubble Kusi pad are very very consistent. But some control surfaces can feel quite bad with slow feet, and some rough surfaces can feel horrible with small feet. The next thing is for you guys who are consistent with your main mouse. In this case it's very easy for you to get something that's very good with your specific mouse and mouse feet. And if you have been maining that mouse for a long time or you are planning to main it for a long time, you can of course upgrade the feed as well. It's a small investment and it can really improve the experience. What you should consider is that if you're using a mouse that has four small feet, you often should consider a smoother surface. If your mouse has two large feet, you're not really that constrained to any surface. I would maybe want to simplify these last two points by saying that whatever mouse you're using, you want to get a pad that's good for that specific mouse. My personal preference is that if I'm using a larger and a heavier mouse, I want a faster pad and when I'm using a small and a lightweight mouse, I usually want to use something that has quite a bit of control. The fourth thing is to consider your sensitivity when you choose your surface. If you play with a lower sensitivity, you can get away with a faster surface, and if you play with a higher sensitivity, you should most often use a slower pad. Or at least a pad that gives you some kind of feedback. Friction is one thing that can give you that feedback, but a rough surface can actually work in the same way. It's easier for you to control a fast surface that's rough, because there is that roughness that gives you the feedback through the mouse feed. Great example of a mouse pad like this is the Artisan High End. There are actually even a couple of CSGO professional players who have been using these rough surfaces and deletion twists are some of the best players in the world. And the last and maybe even the most important tip for you is that choose gaming gear for your own preferences. You should not care too much about what professional players or me or any other reviewer use. If you like a mousepad that's not very popular and you perform great with it in game, don't listen to people who tell you you should change. And the same applies to mice as well. I mean even if you have the same exact hand size and grip style, we might still prefer different mice. So choose something that you find comfortable and stick with that long term. Trying to find the perfect mouse for yourself is usually just a waste of time, and you actually end up using more energy into getting used to a new mouse instead of improving in game. But there are of course other factors that you should consider as well depending on your environment. If it gets very humid in your room, you need a mouse pad that's resistant to humidity. The only issues that I get in regards of humidity is just my hand sweating and feeling sticky on a mouse pad, but that happens on most pads. There are very good mouse pads available that are not affected by humidity at all, for example all the artisan pads, and also most likely all cordial pads. Remember that good things happen to those people who spread some love around. For example, Thug D found a 3060 Ti while digging a hole in his backyard. Not exactly sure why he was digging that hole, but he seems to be subscribed to me, so he must have good intentions. But yeah, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and see you in the next one.